good afternoon everyone so in the last lecture as we have discussed we are going to see what is the derivation for the simple pendulum okay like lange's equation of motion for the simple pendulum okay any doubt about anything about last lectures whatever if we have seen in the last lectures no ma'am okay so let us go for the firstly we will see the construction of the simple pendulum and then we will find out what are the um, we can say the generalized coordinate are required for this and afterwards we will go for finding the lagrange's equations of motion okay as we have discussed earlier that how many generalized coordinates are required for the simple pendulum yes can anyone tell me if you remember i have explained you this in the heading of generalized coordinate and degrees of freedom where we have discussed yes anyone remember what i told you about number of generalized coordinate required for the simple pendulum example madhe ghetla hota na degrees of freedom ani generalized coordinate ki definition explain karta na Okay, consider a simple pendulum. Suppose this is what a rigid support and string of a length L we have taken, and this is a vertical line, and this is what we can say it is making a circular motion in a simple pendulum. We can say it is motion of a simple pendulum, and here it makes an angle thirty degree, and this is what a x coordinate, this is y coordinate, and this is what an angle theta made by those were. straight uh, string of a length l with the vertical and suppose this is p x y is the position of a particle or we can say it is going to p a point p with the coordinate x and y will describe the position of the particle at any point suppose this is n and this is what a point a okay now here we have considered a single pendulum consisting of a point mass m suspended by inextensible and weightless string what do you mean by inextensible that means it is just uh, wo string ka length constant hai okay it is <coughs> not like a spring so if you take a spring spring might be a na pen cha madhe aste tiktok pen asta ta cha madhe pen uh, string aste so it is not like that it is a of a fixed length okay and weightless no doubt it cannot be weightless we can consider some amount of weight Uh, as we are discussing all the ideal situation we will consider it is inextensible weightless string of a length l uh, let us consider this p of x y be the position of a particle at some instant uh, so we can have uh, with the help of a uh, this uh, right angle triangle we can say this is x square plus y square is equals to l square and how many degrees of freedom it will require so x and y are the partition coordinate but they are related by one equation so only one uh, degrees of freedom is there and for that one we have selected theta to be the generalized coordinate in this case okay because if you know the angle theta which is made by the string of a length l with a vertical you can say that what is the position of your particle correct ho 
If theta is an angle made by the string with the vertical, then theta will de determine the position of the particle at any instant. So now we can have this uh, sine theta from this figure. We can have the value of sine theta and cos theta. Sine theta, I can write it as opposite side upon uh, hypotenuse. What is opposite side? It is nothing but your x-axis divided by hypotenuse is L. Cos theta is adjacent side. What is adjacent side? It is y divided by the hypotenuse that is L. Let's name it as some equation one. Okay. Now, what is our aim to find out Lagrange's equation of a motion? What is our Lagrange's equation of a motion? D by dt of dou L by dou qj dot minus dou L by dou qj is equals to zero in case of a conservative system. Because if we know that this is we are discussing on conservative system, actual equation is nothing but d by dt of dou t by dou qj dot minus dou t by dou qj is equals to qj. This is an actual equation. But as we see that this is what in case of a conservative system. Okay. The forces acting are constant. So we will assume the conservative system. So what we need here, uh, this equation in such a way that first we should find out what is L is equals to T minus E. For that, first we know what is kinetic energy, what is potential energy. Okay. That's why I will start with the kinetic energy. The formula for the kinetic energy is 1 upon 2 m v square. That is 1 upon 2 m r dot square. And now we know that what is r dot in the, uh, r in this case? The position vector is with the two, uh, as in the 2D plane, r is equal to xi plus yj. What will be r dot x dot i plus y dot j? <coughs> so, I will not write in detail. We have done this already. R dot square manje kai in array the dot product vagari use karun i dot i one huna. So x dot square plus y dot square. Okay. So in this way now we should now find out what is the value of x dot and y dot. So this we can find out from equation one. What is our equation one? Is we can write it in terms of x and y. That is x is equals to what is the value of x is L sine theta and y is equals to L cos theta. Now here we should know, find uh, we should find out the value of uh, x dot and y dot, correct? So let me find out what is x dot. Now here we are taking the derivative with respect to t, correct? x dot means dx by dt and L is a constant, theta is a variable because as theta is changing the your mass or pendulum is changing its position, correct? Now, how to calculate x dot? L as it is derivative sine theta is cos theta and derivative of theta with respect to t that is theta dot. Again, y dot, how it write, uh, how it can be written? L derivative of cos theta is minus sine theta, derivative of theta is a theta dot. Okay, now what is our aim to find out? x dot square plus y dot square, which is equals to L square cos square theta into theta dot square plus L square sine square theta into theta dot square. And then finally, if I take theta dot square and L square common, we remains in the bracket as sine square theta plus cos square theta. In this, we get x dot square plus y dot square is equals to L square theta dot square. Okay. So we got this equation. Now using this equation in our equation of a kinetic energy t is equals to 1 upon 2 m r dot square is x dot square plus y dot square which is nothing but l square theta dot square so you can name it as some equation 1 okay, let me repeat where we have started we have a one uh, particle of a mass m uh, and length of a string l inextensible and uh, it is we can say weightless and it is suspended by a rigid support. It is making an angle theta with the vertical and P of X, Y, that the point P will describe the position of a particle at any instant. But X, Y are dependent. Why they are dependent? Because they are related by equation, which is equation X square plus Y square is equal to 
एल स्क्वेर म्हणजे ते डिपेंडेंट आहे डिपेंडेंट चा मीनिंग समजते सगळ्यांना सो एक्स स्क्वेअर प्लस वाय स्क्वेअर इज इक्वल टू एल स्क्वेअर मीन्स वॉट एक्स कॅन बी रिटर्न इन टर्म्स ऑफ वाय वाय कॅन बी रिटर्न इन टर्म्स ऑफ एक्स बट वॉट वी नीड इन द जनरलाइज कोऑर्डिनेट वी नीड लिस्ट पॉसिबल नंबर ऑफ लिनियरली इंडिपेंडेंट कोऑर्डिनेट ओके सो इफ वी नीड लिस्ट पॉसिबल नंबर ऑफ लिनियरली इंडिपेंडेंट कोऑर्डिनेट सो थीटा इज सफिशियंट फॉर दॅट Theta will describe the position of a particle at any instant. Now our aim is to find out Lagrange's equation of a motion. But as discussed in the cases, I have told you that this is in case of a conservative system. So hence we are going to take this equation d by dt of dou l by dou q j dot minus dou l by dou q j. And then our aim is to find out l. L is nothing but t minus v. Lagrangian function defined kilo or the no. and after that we must find out what is kinetic energy and potential energy for that you must use this cos theta and sin theta from the figure you can calculate it is opposite side divided by hypotenuse adjacent side divided by hypotenuse you can find out the values of x and y substitute in our equation of kinetic energy you get our equation one kai doubt hai ka man okay now let us find out what is a potential energy is equals to ma mgh mass and gravitational acceleration both are constant h is nothing but height of your <coughs> pendulum which is nothing but an correct this is what your height of a pendulum you can see here this is what a height of a pendulum that means in this area itself it is going to uh, oscillate so hence we can say an is a height of your pendulum so v is equals to m g h a n is nothing but you can find out a n with the help of a l minus y length of a string minus the y coordinate will give you the value of a a n this is what a length of string minus this one okay this y length of string may say agar y coordinate of subtract karoge so you can get the value of a a n parala hai point Yes, ma'am. So now we know what is y. Y coordinate we have already found. Now in terms of sine theta, cos theta we have written. So it is L cos theta, and hence we can write down it is m g L one minus cos theta. And this was a question in the set exam. What is the potential energy of the simple pendulum? Maybe in the मेरी एटीन मध्य तक ना तो मे बी इन जनवरी ट्वेंटी एटीन और इन द सेवेंटीन जो भी एग्जाम सेट का हुआ था उसमें सेम क्वेश्चन था वॉट इज अ पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ द सिंपल पेंडुलम ओके एंड दे हैव गिवन सम ऑप्शन लाइक एम जी एल वन माइनस साइन थीटा एम जी एल वन माइनस कॉस थीटा की जगह पे यहाँ पे वन प्लस कॉस थीटा सो लाइक दिस ऑप्शन आर देर यू हैव टू सिलेक्ट करेक्ट वन Okay, so in this way we have found uh, t and v. So we get L is equals to t minus v, which is one upon two m L square theta dot square minus m g L one minus cos theta. Okay, everyone understood up to this step how we have written all this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma <laughs> so this is what our equation three. Now our aim is to go for the Lagrange's equation of a motion. So d by dt of to l by do q1 dot i. But it is q1 is nothing but your theta, and only one generalized coordinate. So only one equation is sufficient. That is to l by do theta dot minus to l by do theta is equals to zero. So we get d by dt of l with respect to theta dot. Ha. Sanga derivative kaise hai na re? Theta dot mande theta dot chita mahi ka dite the baga. Mag derivative sanga. एल ची इक्वेशन दिखते है ना इतने इक्वेशन थ्री हाफ यम एल स्क्वायर टू थीटा डॉट हाफ हाफ गेट कैंसिल सो वी कैन राइट एम एल स्क्वायर थीटा डॉट ओनली 
minus derivative of l with respect to theta the first term is not involving any term of theta the first term is zero so here we <coughs> we get minus mgl okay derivative one is zero again derivative cos theta is minus sin theta minus minus again become plus yahan ka minus sin okay this minus sin and derivative cos theta is minus sin theta so both get cancel and simply i can write sin theta which is equal to zero okay now what we have to do after that uh, after finding these derivatives this m and l both are constant na mass and length of a string derivative theta dot with respect to t i can write theta double dot minus minus become plus so it is mgl sin theta now mass is a constant term as well as it is non zero mass a constant hai yani non zero hai so i can divide right no <coughs> gl sin theta as well as length of a string is also non zero so i can divide and hence i can write theta double dot uh okay let us divide by l square so we can get g by l sin theta which is the required equation of a motion for the simple pendulum okay very easy it is kya karna hai aapko pehle generalize coordinate kitne wo dekhna hai and then decide how many uh Lagrange's equation of motion you have to solve, and then find out the value of t, which is equation one. Then find out the potential energy v. Combine them. L is equal to t minus v. Use the Lagrange's equation of motion. Ah, uh, जितने आपके generalized coordinate होंगे, उतने आपके Lagrange's equation of motion होंगे. Suppose यहाँ पे अगर दो generalized coordinate होंगे, so we have to solve two equation. Just like we have done the in the last lecture. For force is equal to m a. The equation derive करते हैं ना तीन equations solve के लिए होते हैं ना. Yes ma'am. So we get this is theta double dot plus g by l sine theta is a required equation for the simple pendulum. Now let us go for the next example. Particle of a mass m projected with the initial velocity. I will write down whole example. Then I will explain you what is a uh, image for this and how to draw. And after that we will come to the uh, derivation. Okay, uh, so what is given? A particle of a mass m projected with initial velocity u. That means, uh, suppose we have in a 2D plane. Suppose a particle of mass m is projected with the initial velocity u, with an angle uh, alpha. It is making an angle alpha, and u uh, with a horizontal. That means this is what x and y. It is projected. मतलब किसी ने उस पार्टिकल को A particle of mass m is projected with initial velocity u. Just imagine that you have a um, 
cricket ball and you have uh, just thrown it with some initial velocity u so it is making some an angle alpha with the horizontal okay easy example everyone understood how it looks physically क्रिकेट बॉल को लेके आपको थ्रो करना है अगर थ्रो करने के बाद उसका जो भी वेलोसिटी से जाएगा ना कुछ वो यस मैम सो व्हाट वी हैव टू डू यूज द लैग्रेंज इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन टू डिस्क्राइब द मोशन ऑफ अ पार्टिकल ओके नाउ लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द प्रूफ so what we have to consider let a particle of a mass m projected with the initial velocity u making an angle alpha these are given thing with a uh, such that p of x y will describe the position of the particle suppose it is uh, projected like this and after some time it will fall down let p of x y will describe the position of the particle at any point and hence um, now let us assume that the component of the velocities along x and y axis we have to find out correct so for that let me uh, let p of x y be the position of a particle at any instant but here we can see that x and y are sufficient to describe the position of a particle so x and y itself are sufficient to treat as a generalized coordinate because there is no extra restrictions no because agar aap kisi uh, cricket ball ko agar hawa mein fek rahe ho to wahan pe us, uh, usko koi restriction nahi hai na it can travel at any uh, whatever he want and then it can come back with the help of a gravitational force correct so x and y are sufficient to describe the position of a particle at any instant so x and y itself are the generalized coordinate okay the component of the velocity along x and y axis at point o are given by component of the velocity we can give as u cos alpha and u sin alpha these are what our component of the velocity component of velocity means what u is a velocity with which we have thrown a ball okay and uh, we want to find out what are the component of the velocity along x and y so for that we must know uh, what is the velocities along x and y axis correct so hence uh, <coughs> we have written that u cos alpha and u sin alpha are the component of the velocity along x and y axis now firstly what is our aim to find out t is equal to 1 upon 2 v square right 1 upon 2 mv square uh, so what are the steps to solve the example first you have to find out the generalized coordinate then you have to find out uh, what is kinetic energy then find out the potential energy then uh, you have to write down l is equals to t minus v then write the lagrange's equation of motion and then you have to solve it and you get the result okay yahi step follow karne hai hame okay samasya sagrana ka hai steps hai yes ma'am ma i need to by heart every example so 1 upon 2 m r dot square and hence we can as we are in a 2d plane and x and y are sufficient to describe the position so i can write again directly 1 upon 2 x dot square plus y dot square okay so hence let me name it as some equation 1 because x and y are sufficient to describe the position no no need to write down in terms of r and theta so hence i have written the equation kinetic energy for potential energy mgh now what is a height height can be your y axis wo jitni height pe jayega wo y axis se calculate kar sakte hai na hum log so whatever may be the height we can calculate with the y axis so i can write directly mgy is it okay so so l is equal so i can write now it is t minus v which is 1 upon 2 m x dot square plus y dot square minus m g y so let us name it as some equation 3 now let us go for the lagrange's equation of a motion so for that how many generalized coordinate we have two generalized coordinate q1 q2 that is nothing but your x and y fast ho to ga khub no ma'am okay 
Now let us go for the Lagrange's equation of motion. d by dt of dou L by dou. First, I will uh, write down the first one that is x. Okay, let me write down the in general equation first. Qj dot minus dou L by dou Qj. But here, again, we are in the conservative case. So we have written this equation. Okay, for j equal to 1 and 2 only because we have only two generalized coordinates. Hence, d by dt of L with respect to x dot minus L with respect to x is equal to 0. Similarly, we have d by dt of L with respect to y dot minus L with respect to y equal to 0. So in this way, we got the two Lagrange's equations of motion. At the L equation, I have like a derivative karu shakta apan. Lilet ka sagrani L. Solve karta hai madhya sugar. Oh ma'am. Okay. If you have written this, you have to tell me the derivative. L with respect to x dot, L with respect to x. M x dot. M x dot. Okay, good. M x dot minus L with respect to x ka in array. Zero. Zero. There is no term of x. Plus next term t by dt of L with respect to y dot chi in array. M y dot. M y dot. M y dot. Minus again derivative with respect to y. M g. Okay. Now it is with negative sign now. So now we have got the these two equation. <coughs> so here I can write this as mx double dot is equal to zero derivative with respect to t. No, here I can write this as my double dot plus mg equal to zero. So mass is a non-zero term. I can cancel out and we can write y double dot plus g equal to zero. Okay, and mx double dot. So we get the equations. We can say equation 4 and 5 okay we have to now combine this equation so that we can say what is a uh, actual uh, common Lagrange's equation of motion for this example okay for that what do we will do we will integrate and then we will find out the value of x and y because here we get the value of uh, x double dot and y double dot correct we have got the equation in terms of x double dot and y double dot correct so let me say integrating with respect to t to above equations we get m x double dot n okay so m x double dot mass is non-zero i can write directly x double dot equal to zero i can write this as x dot is equal to some constant c1 correct yes. Similarly, we can do for the second equation. Okay, first we'll complete about the first one and then we'll go for the second. Okay, the equation number four we have integrated. Again, integration, you get x is equals to some c1 into t plus c2. Okay, so you can name this equation as some equation number six. But here we got x dot is equal to c1, no? So you can substitute the value of a c1 here. We get x is equal to x dot into t plus c2, correct? Sorry, here it should be, uh, correct, c1 t plus c2. So x dot is a initial velocity, x dot from the velocity just now, right? Na? Velocity along the x direction. Or we can say allow velocity along the x-axis. So what is a velocity along x-axis? Just now in the description I have told you that we have a component of velocity u sin alpha u cos alpha along x and y axis. Correct? So u cos alpha is along 
x-axis and u sin alpha is along y-axis. Correct? Components of the velocity. If you are confusing, first you have to find out what is x and y with the help of cos alpha. Cos alpha and sin alpha calculate kara. Mag tumala x and y mirnare. Nantar tumi x dot ani y dot calculate kara. Okay? So x is equal to x dot is nothing but your initial velocity along x axis, which is u cos alpha plus c2. Correct? Now we have to find out the value of c1 and c2 so that we can solve this equation. Correct? So let us assume x equal to 0. For x equal to 0, time is also 0. In this equation, if I substitute it, 0 is equal to u cos alpha into t. t is also 0 plus c2. So I will get directly c2 is equal to 0. Correct, C1 already we have found. What is C1? It is x dot, which is nothing but your component of the velocity, u cos alpha. And hence, we can write now in the, substituting the value of a C1 and C2 in the equation number. What is a number? 6. Okay, substituting the value of a constant term in our equation 6, we get x is equals to, what is the equation? u cos alpha into t let us name it as some equation number seven okay now we have to solve second equation also now equation five okay integrating equation number five with respect to t integrating equation five with respect to t we get what is our equation First, I will write down the equation y double dot plus g equal to 0. Integration with respect to t, what is the result? Yes. Sangha chi in array. y dot plus gt is equal to c y dot plus gt is equal to some constant now as we are integrating uh, <clears throat> so we get some constant term in the integration now let us substitute at uh, time t equal to 0 what is the initial velocity In the direction of y axis, what is the initial velocity at t equal to 0? At t equal to 0, chi velocity is not a hika. Zero. Yes, anyone else, students, those who are not responsive, chi which are t equal to 0, manje time 0 is na initial time la. Velocity chi value ka is nare along x or y zero. axis. Zero. So hence at t equal to zero, I can have initial velocity y dot can be given as u sin alpha so we can have this is what u sin alpha from the equation into z plus 0 equal to some another or oh sorry c1 we cannot write c3 we will write because c1 and c2 already we have used <coughs> so what is our equation we get y dot plus gt is equal to u sine alpha since value of c3 we get okay so hence now again integrating we get y dot we have got <laughs> after integration once again we get y plus gt square by 2 again integration with respect to t so u sin alpha into t plus next constant c4 okay again we can say at t equal to 0 the y coordinate is also 0 because time t equal to 0 pe aapka jo bhi aapne object liya hai 
थ्रो करने के लिए वो इट दैट हाइट ऑफ दैट ऑब्जेक्ट विल बी जीरो सपोज यू हैव टेकन अ बॉल एंड यू वॉन्ट एट टी इक्वल टू जीरो वट विल बी द पोजिशन ऑफ दैट बॉल इट इज एट जीरो बिकॉज वाई एक्सेस इज जीरो आफ्टर थ्रोइंग इट विथ सम वेलासिटी इट विल गो एट सम हाइट So at t equal to zero, y is zero. Hence, we can put in this equation. We get zero plus zero is equal to zero is plus c four, and hence we get c four equal to zero. And now, after getting c four equal to zero, the above equation becomes y plus g t square divided by two is equal to u sine alpha into t. Correct. So in this way we get uh, the equation y plus g t square divided by two minus u sine alpha t is equal to zero. Okay, now already we have solved our equation of x. At that time uh, we have started with x double dot, and then we get this equation after integration, and after that finally we got equation seven. From equation seven we can find out the value of t. It is x upon u cos alpha. Barabar? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, using equation seven, we get right. Using equation seven, we get y plus g. The value of t I have to write. G by two I will write here. The value of t what we have written here it is x upon u. Cos alpha minus u sine alpha. Again, here we have x divided by u cos alpha is equals to zero. Then again, u u get cancelled. U is with some initial velocity, right? <clears throat> so finally, we get the equation as y plus g by two x upon u cos alpha minus x tan. alpha which is the required equation of motion for this example in which we have thrown one object with some initial velocity u and it will come back up due to gravitational force this is what the position of a particle at any instant u is a velocity so component of velocity along x direction is u cos alpha and component of velocity along y direction is u sin alpha that is this is what your x dot This is y dot. He called us in Kunala that x and y find out. Kara, how to find out? Karna re the angle alpha. So you have to find out first cos alpha. What will be cos alpha? Adjacent side. What is your adjacent side? X axis. X upon okay. So you can do this with cos alpha and sin alpha. And you can get the component of velocities because as we are writing in terms of u, so you can get this u cos alpha and u sin alpha. Any doubt up to this one for this example? Should I repeat? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Particle of a mass m is projected with initial velocity u. So, if its initial velocity u is, then its components will be there. In the x direction, it is u cos alpha. In the y direction. the component of velocity is u sin alpha you can do it from your figure itself and then afterwards we want to find out its lagrange's equation of a motion so lagrange's equation of motion ke liye hame firstly kya chahiye we need how many generalized coordinate right so how many generalized coordinates are there in this example yes how many generalized coordinates are there in this example two two That is x and y sufficient to describe the position of a particle at any instant. And after that, we have found the what is kinetic energy. It is one uh, upon two m b square. That is one upon two m r dot square. And then uh, after that, we have found the potential energy. So height of this uh, particle is nothing but y axis. And then we have written l is equal to t minus v. Then how many? Lagrange's equation of motion. We got two Lagrange's equation of motion for x as well as for y. Okay. 
Yes, and after that, just find out the derivative L is equals to T minus V. Then integrate this equation one by one. A K integrate karo or usme T equal to zero ki conditions put up karo C one, C two, C three, C four. In constants ke value nikalne ke liye hume uh, initial conditions put up karna padega na. Differential equation paper in the first semester you have studied how to find out the values of constant with the help of a given initial condition. Okay. So here by using these initial condition, we have found the values of C1 and C2. So from equation 7, we can get the value of a T, which can be substituted in our equation uh, 5. Okay, equation 5 for solve karne ke baad usme substitute karenge. And you get the result. Okay, this is what your required equation of motion in case of a uh, particle is projected with some initial velocity u making an angle alpha with the Vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal. Yes, G by two, G by two, what? From T square. This is square. Okay, fine. Oh. This is square. This is square. This is square. So square cos square. Okay, now it is okay. T square. Na? So T square must be x by u cos alpha it's a square okay anyone else having a doubt kai karala nahi khub fast sala khub slow anything else you can ask no ma'am hello no ma'am i put on a screen huh cos alpha is equal to x upon hypotenuse okay cos alpha कैसे find out करते हो आप? आपने यहाँ लिखा है ना मैंने cos alpha is equal to x upon adjacent side upon hypotenuse क्या होता है? hypotenuse ना? Oh, yes ma'am. What is a hypotenuse? This is what your velocity you know. It is going with some velocity u, so u is itself a your uh, hypotenuse, correct? Because if you complete this uh, right angle triangle, so this is what a hypotenuse. This is adjacent side, this is opposite side. So you get x is equal to u cos alpha. But now I am writing this in terms of velocity, so this will be nothing but your x dot. Yes. Component of velocity yes. is yes. direction. Sin alpha ka sa find out karna re opposite side. Opposite side ka is na re. Sanga opposite side ka hai. Alpha, angle alpha here. Opposite side. X, Y. 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 P of X, Y nahi hona re. P of X, Y is a position of a particle. Imagine kara tumala particle to me throw ke le. That's why I told you every time you have to imagine. Okay, if you have a ball uh, throw kiai, so P of x, y, that is x and y itself are sufficient to describe the position of a particle. So this is what your x coordinate, this is y coordinate. Okay, opposite side ka is marema. Y. Y divided by hypotenuse manje ka hai na re he. He ka hai tuncha u. U is nothing but your velocity. Correct? So hence you get this is what component of velocity as we are writing in terms of u so you get y dot is equals to u sin alpha is it okay now yes ma'am yes yes ma'am sanga azun kai doubt no ma'am no ma'am okay uh, let us end the lecture after that um, in the next lecture, we will start with the spherical pendulum. If we have started, then it will not be finished. So that's why we need a whole lecture for this one. Let us stop here, otherwise I have to repeat in the next lecture. Thank you. You can leave the meeting.